And welcome to the writer's life, the place where you get the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and my particular writer's life, and where you get the truth about the writer's life. Subscribe if you haven't already, punch the like button, tap the bell for notifications so that you don't miss out on one exciting video. That's my Irish accent. I've been watching the Nick again, and <laughs> I. I love that huge dude who runs the ambulance uh, division. He's always picking on the nun because he secretly likes her. And I think she likes him. Um, anyway, it's great rewatching it. Um, I watched it, I don't know, about seven years ago when my life was in a bit of a turmoil again. Um, so I, I don't even remember some of this, some of the episodes, but it's got it's such a great show. I like those period pieces, you know, New York City in 1900, whatever. And in fact, I was convinced that they filmed a lot of it in historic Troy across the river um, because it looks an awful lot like Washington Park and some of the buildings over there. But I guess not. I guess they filmed the whole thing in, in lower Manhattan. So they say, I still say they filmed some of it in Troy because I remember. I remember them filming some sort of Victorian show or whatever. Um, Victorian era show, but anyway, I'm rambling to myself while well, I should be giving you something of value here. Um, da -da 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 it's a rainy Sunday, it's chilly. Um, the world is in a turmoil, the borders being invaded. We, we've taken in 10 million, 10 million people from around the world um illegals who we whom we have no idea who they are over the past 36 months or whatever it's been and uh we're now like supporting two wars and one war we think could be coming um food is getting so expensive it's almost like food insecurity um things are not good i mean i don't mean to be debbie downer but things are definitely not good and they need to change uh next november uh, I really do. I think things really need to, I mean, it's, we've, we're living in a lawless society as well. Something I never thought in, uh, a, 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 we're living at a time of, uh, great political persecution, um, and, uh, election interference, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, that's what's happening. Um, real banana Republic stuff. Um, anyway, that's not from, for this that's not that's topic is not for for us i guess but uh it's still a part of the writer's life because we, we we try to write and thrive under this kind of oppression and this kind of uh threat of being canceled and um but uh, you know you can't be scared you have to just do what you think is right and i do anyway highlands rules i haven't talked about this in a long time but it i was reminded of them today when I was handing in a manuscript to my editor, to one of my editors. And I was thinking like, oh, I wrote it six months ago. You know, like it shouldn't have been sitting around for six months even. But I looked at the date, you know, uh, the draft is July, 2021. Like that's two years ago. That's too long. You know, so I've, I've definitely fallen off one of Heinlein's rules. Heinlein's rules. Um, the rules they are rule one, you must write, right? I write every day. Two, you must finish what you start. I finished this book that I'm talking about. It's, oh, by the way, the book is uh, I the Jury, a Steve Jobs PI thriller. And I've written another Steve Jobs also after that that's still hanging around. Um, you must refrain from rewriting except to editorial order. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You must put your story on the market. Boom, I fell off of that one. <laughs> fell right off of it. Boom, slipped right off. Go back to number one. Um, and you must keep it on the market, you know, at all times, whatever. Okay. Those are the five rules. Um, but f for some reason, and I think a lot of us do this, especially the short story writers. Um, some of these guys are, you know, some of 
some of my colleagues are putting out two and three short stories or more a week. And, you know, they probably just put them aside and keep going and like, holy crap, I got like a hundred short stories. I still need to be published. Um, that's not to say I'm not publishing new stuff every single month. Um, and when you consider Vela, I'm publishing stuff every day. Um, but do not let a novel hang around for two years because this goes back to what I was just talking about in my intro, my little, my little rant monologue. Um, the world has changed so much in two years um, already, and it's going to change again over the course of the next two years, um, hopefully for better. That remains to be seen. Um, I'm not one to speculate, but, uh, you know, get that book out. You know, like, if you're writing an album, are you listening, children? If you are an aspiring writer, if you're writing a novel, finish it. Plow all the way through, finish it, edit as you go, get it done, get it to your editor, and get it published one way or another. Um, if you want to traditionally publish it, great, get it to your, your agent. If you want to independently publish, um, great, get it out to market immediately. Um, my suggestion, and this is not, this is, I can't tell you what to do. This is just for entertainment value only. Uh, my suggestion, is, if you're going to go the independent route, is to place it in to Kindle Unlimited um, for the first three months. Price it low so that you get on the hot new hot new releases bestseller list, and hopefully a few other bestseller lists. And um, after the three months, you know, utilize your um, Kindle countdown deals and your free days. And then when that's over, you can either put it in for one more cycle if it feels though it, it could use one more cycle, or you you go wide. You you put it on draft to digital, and uh, you hit up the entire world um, and the libraries and all sorts of stuff. Um, and you can also put the book on publisher drive, publish publish drive, I believe it's called. I've got like twenty books on there right now, like only like a third of my independent. Um, collection, but uh, um, the only reason I use Publish Drive is just so I'm on Google Play. Um, I don't really, you know, if I make 50 bucks there every quarter, you know, it's a lot. Um, but anyway, that's what you need to do. Um, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Sound, sounds like it. But when, when you're writing so much and you have so much material, um, that's coming, a new material that's coming out every day. Um, it, it, believe it or not, that one Heinlein rule, um, you must get your book to market or whatever, um, is, is, it can be like really tough. You would think like it would be the most no brainer of them all because that's your income. Like each book is a piece of property, a piece of intellectual property, um, which you can exchange for cash. You, you know, you can license it out for cash. And sometimes we just get so busy writing. There's an old adage. Some writers get so busy writing that they forget to make money. That's this guy. Um, that's why I was joking with my agent the other day. And I'm like, yeah, but in two and a half years, I, I can collect early Social Security. So I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'll get even worse with Heinlein, Heinlein's rules then. Um, I don't know. Probably not. I'll probably be even more obsessed, um, you know, and maybe I won't even need to take or want to take rather. I don't probably don't need it, but uh, maybe I won't even want to take early SS. Who knows? Anyway, don't keep rambling. Vince. But anyway, that's all I got for you today. Heinlein's rules. Um, how I, it's how easy it is to, to fall off of that, that one ultra important uh, rule, you know, which is get your book out to market. Don't wait two or three years because by then the book might be, you know, might be dated in certain areas or whatever. Your book's always going to be dated. At, you know, it's, they're, they're, write your book so that they're evergreen. You know, don't put too much popular culture in there or anything like that. Um, you could put a certain amount, you know, but uh, make it so that like 100 years from now, if the human race still exists, someone could pick it up and really just be like, wow, I'm like transported 
a hundred years ago and, and you know not skipping a beat all right um that's all i got for today just a boring sunday i've uh, been it's a work day for me but uh but have a little fun i have to say today is the first day in like two weeks that i haven't felt as though i've been walking around with a low grade temperature the first day i slept like 11 hours last night and 10 hours the night before um i didn't even read last night when i got into bed i was just like Argh. and uh i mean i had a huge sushi dinner and like i was like i'm going to bed and i you know just felt my body like soaking up all those nutrients which i needed um but i am still going to my doctor this week and then a specialist in a couple of weeks and uh, i have a feeling all will be well and uh anyway wish me luck all right uh, i will talk to everyone I, I might have a guest on tuesday i'm not sure i should probably give you the rundown um holy crap it's a few days it's gonna be march or november it's possible paul, paul brazil might come on in the next couple of days i don't know though it's he he's in poland it might be tough um but i, I don't want to bother him either um oh hang on hang on hang on i'm not that out of it uh, oh boy let's see i think i don't have anything till friday i got chris barter coming in uh he's a poet and but he's as you know like my my podcast is not only about writers and their books and stuff like that, but it's also about people who actually do different interesting things. And Chris Bard is not only a world-class poet, but uh, he's uh, works for the Forest Service and he's fought forest fires and all sorts of stuff like that. He's a, he, he one of my best friends from writing school, you know, big six foot four dude um, and uh, just a really interesting guy. I think you'll like him. Um, and after that, Uh, after that, I got on the seventh. I got Stanley James, who's a crip from LA, and he's a writer, and he has his own publishing company. And uh, they actually are taking submissions right now. He's a really cool dude. Um, reading one of his books right now, it's, it's written really in his voice, which is important. We were talking about that the other day. Really, really catches voice. Um, it's almost like he's he's talking to you um, and telling you this story, you know, like just seated right next to you and telling you a story. Anyway, that's what I got coming up, um, but there's probably gonna be stuff in between. All right, um, you know, I'll make those announcements as they come to my attention. Um, all right, have a great Sunday. Hope you're not watching this right now. I hope you're out doing something fun. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow and ciao, ciao.